Welcome, I'm Dragon, and today I will show you how to make print and place gears with Blender that you can 3D print if you have a 3D printer. The gear I make in this video will also be available for free on Prusa printers along with Patreon. Patreon will also have an extra gear related thing that I will show at the end of the video, but let's not wait any longer for the tutorial and just get straight into it. First things first, let's fix it so that the measurements will be accurate when putting an object into the slicer by going to the scene tab and then under units change the unit scale to 0 0.001. And because the gears aren't huge, I change the length to millimeters instead of meters. Then to make this easier, we can get two add-ons. Both add-ons are automatically installed with Blender, you just need to enable them. These add-ons are Add Mesh, Extra Objects, and 3D Print Toolbox. To enable these add-ons, go into Edit, then Preferences, and search for the add-ons. Then click the checkbox. Of course, make sure that you save your preferences unless autosave is already enabled. We won't use the 3D print toolbox for a little while, but we are going to use the extra objects right away. Use it by going how you would normally add an object, and then under add mesh, you will see gears is now an option near the bottom along with some other newer options. When we click add gear, there will be a pop-up in the left hand corner, which when you open will have a variety of options and if you accidentally click elsewhere and it's not showing anymore, you can get it back by right clicking and choosing change gear, which is very convenient. For this tutorial we want 18 teeth and we'll leave the radius alone, but we will change the size later. I'm also going to change the pressure angle near 45 degrees, but as you can see, I'm not going all the way to 45 degrees because it actually overlaps, which is why I'm going to use 42 degrees. Now let's add another gear and change its radius to 1.5 and the number of teeth to 26. Now the only thing we need to do is change the location and the Z rotation so that when it prints, it doesn't overlap. Once it looks about right, we can select both gears and go into edit mode and select the two outer vertices of both gears, then duplicate them and move them up a little and pop into object mode and combine the gears, and then back into edit mode to fill the vertices and creating an edge that will allow us to see the edge length when we turn it on under the viewport overlays. Then scale the gears and the edge until it says around 50 millimeters, or whatever you would like them to measure at. Then you can delete the edge. From there, we select the inner circles of the gears. Once they're selected, you can hit Command E for the edge menu, and then Bridge Edge Loops. Be sure to make Bridge Edge Loops loop pairs. I then select the top faces and make the gear thicker, and added a loop cut in the middle of each gear. Then select the top inner faces of the gear, and change the Transform Pivot Point to Individual Origins. Then scale along the X and Y axis by hitting Shift Z while scaling. How far you go doesn't really matter as long as it looks like something like you're seeing right now. Then select all of the inner parts of the gear and Shift D to duplicate them. I then scale them along the X and Y so that I could see the gap a little. To check the distance you can then select two vertices and hit F to create an edge. Then turn the measuring overlays on again. Then you can scale each of these parts so that there's enough distance to make sure they don't connect when printed or have too much wiggle room. I originally planned on doing a smaller tolerance around 0.1 to 0.15, but found it worked better to have a little larger tolerance around 0.2. After correct measurements, I went and filled the bottom with F. Then I extruded the tops and scaled the extruded parts along the X and Y. And now, because the rest is pretty straightforward, using extrude, fill, and scale tools, I'm going to speed this up a little and then you could see the final product. So there we have it, this is what the basic here looks like, but now we just need to 3D print it, which is where the 3D print toolbox comes in. So if you hit N on the sidebar, you'll find where it says 3D print toolbox, and you can see that you just have an export option, and that's really all you do, save it to where you want to. And then here in the slicer, which in my case is Prusa slicer, you can slice it, and then you're good to go.
Well, there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did end up making a couple more gear related things, which is this four gear, which is basically the same as the tutorial gear, other than it's four gears. And then I made a self-standing gear, which was originally going to be for Arduino and connecting it with a motor so that it would spin it, which is why it was self-standing. But this didn't really work because I couldn't figure out how to get the Arduino to work. And this is what I had. If anyone else knows Arduino and knows what I did wrong, then feel free to let me know. And here's the code also. So as an alternative, I ended up just taping it and using the battery to actually make the gear work as you saw kind of from the intro. Both the self-standing gear and the four gear will be available on Patreon, but you can easily make them yourselves if you want to. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I don't need it anymore, do you?